What's up everybody? In this video I'm going to be testing out a product from JDS Performance Turbos and that is a billet compressor wheel for my Garrett Turbo. Now a while back Garrett released a new line of turbos called the GTX series and their main performance feature was a billet compressor wheel and they, they make awesome numbers and that's all fine and dandy but the problem for me is the smallest GTX turbo is larger than what I want to run on my car. So my only option is to upgrade my existing cast compressor wheel to a billet wheel like this. Now Josh at JDS didn't send me this wheel and say, hey man, make a video and tell everyone how great this wheel is. No, he sent me a video saying, I want you to put this on your turbocharger and test it out and get back to me with the results. This is supposed to be an upgrade for my existing compressor wheel. But if there's one tool that I do not trust, it's the butt dyno. Now in case you're not familiar with the circuitry of a butt dyno, let me break it down for you. You have your butt, and then you have the seat of your automobile, and then your butt is attached to your, your brain. Wow, that's, that's a good brain there. And then you have your eyes here, and those are also hardwired into your brain. So what happens is your eyes see how shiny the part is, and it says, hey man, shiny parts definitely make the car faster. Then your brain sends the information to your butt, which is um, measuring this force between itself and the seat, and it does all these uh, conversion factors. So long story short, after this stuff is all recalibrated, uh, the shinier the part is, the more power your brain is gonna think your car has. Don't you tell me those lightweight valve stem caps made a noticeable difference. So I'm gonna get down to the nitty gritty, get a little scientific and I'm gonna use some actual precision tools to try to see if I can measure a difference between the existing wheel and this wheel. The comparisons I'm gonna be making are physically with the wheels themselves, checking out the weights in between, if there's any difference in weight. If you get a lighter compressor wheel, the turbo should spool faster, it's got less weight to spin up. My car is also equipped with Megasquirt, which is a very powerful data logging tool. I can see what's going on inside the engine as far as boost and fuel and everything you could imagine at all times, and I can data log it and go back and look at the graphs. I'm also gonna be putting the car on the dyno again. Same dyno with the same calibration, so I'm trying to keep that as fair as I can to see if there's gonna be any measurable difference. So the first thing I have to do is take the car out with the stock compressor wheel and get some baseline data. The first set of tests I'm doing, I'm gonna be recording both the boost threshold, which is the lowest possible RPM that a certain boost can be achieved, and also the spool up time, which is if you punch it at a certain RPM, how long does it take for the turbo to achieve a certain boost level? And the boost level I'm gonna be doing all these tests at is gonna be 10 PSI. So for the boost threshold, basically flat ground, fourth gear, 2000 RPM and floor it and you'll hit a certain boost at certain RPMs. I'm gonna be doing all these tests multiple times and getting the averages and stuff because every time you punch it, the turbo doesn't spool the exact same way. It's a little bit different every time and you'll never feel it, you know, sitting in the seat. But when you go back and mega score it and actually look at the data, it does spool a little bit different every time. So I'm gonna do multiple passes. When I have the new compressor wheel in, I'm gonna have the same amount of fuel in the car. I'm gonna try to do it on, you know, in the same air temperature. For the lag test, I'm gonna be using third gear and basically I'm gonna punch it at 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000 and see how many seconds it takes to hit 10 PSI from each of those RPMs. And like I said, I'll be doing each one multiple times and I'm gonna try to keep it as fair as possible. For uh, comparison against my car, just keep in mind that the heavier the car is, the higher gear you're in, the more you load it up, you'll be able to get boost at a lower RPM, the turbo will spool faster. So just things to keep in mind if you're gonna be doing this test yourself. give you a little bit of demo footage so you can actually see and visualize the pulls that I'm doing and uh, I'm gonna go out and do a whole bunch more runs and then compare the data later. Here 
my unofficial workbench, I have some measuring tools and my CHRA that I just got back from Pure Turbos. Highly recommend those dudes. I sent this CHRA to them on Monday uh, around lunchtime and I received it back on Wednesday before lunchtime. So super fast turnaround. The price was really fair as well. I just had the new billet compressor wheel installed and then had the rotating assembly balanced by them. The first thing I want to do is the weigh-in. I already weighed the billet wheel in at 34 grams and the stock wheel at 44 grams. The billet wheel is approximately 23% lighter. A lighter compressor wheel means it's easier to spin so it should lead to faster spool. But let me show you what I found a little bit more interesting. This primary blade here, it sweeps down about 45 degrees. You see it starts here, about here and then it ends about 45 degrees away. On the billet wheel, the primary blade starts here and ends all the way over here. That's about 90 degrees, and I'm not a physicist, but I'm very interested to see what that different blade design is gonna do. Uh, another thing I noticed right away is the length of the front of the primary blade, about 0.52 inches, and the length of the secondary blade 0.443 on the billet wheel the primary 0.614 and also 0.614 on the secondary the more blade is up front here the bigger bite of air the compressor wheel takes and that's a lot more blade and that's why bigger compressor wheels can make more power because the larger diameter you get bigger blades but on this billet wheel the core has been made more narrow so you get a little bit more blade on the inside. And another thing that might be kind of hard to see on the camera is the core of this wheel kind of sweeps outwards. The billet wheel, the core, the part where the nut sits is basically vertical here and it goes down really far and then it sweeps out really aggressively towards the bottom. And the compressor wheel doesn't necessarily need to spin faster to make more boost. If it's pushing more air because of the blade design, it will make more boost faster. So that's another way that uh, one compressor wheel can outperform another one. Now I'm gonna put all this back together. If you're worried about doing water lines and oil lines on, on your build, I'm gonna cover it very in depth on uh, Broken Boosted when I get this far. Ready to slay some Mustangs. I'm out testing the new compressor wheel. First thing I notice is this wheel is louder for sure. Your turbo noise, if you have a very open intake, you're gonna notice that the wheel is louder and has a different tone to it, which is cool. I know the sound doesn't affect performance, but it sounds cool. I haven't driven this car in a week. I've been driving the Broken Boosted, which is completely stock 1.6, so of course this car feels extremely fast right now. It seems to spool up faster. As I explained, the butt dyno before is very inaccurate, so that's why I'm out here data logging and trying to get some hard evidence that this is actually a performance upgrade. So let's go do some more pulls. On my way up to Advanced Engine Dynamics to get the car dynoed with the new compressor wheel. I'm also bringing along Broken Boosted back there. We're gonna do some baseline pulls, see what the stock motor makes so after it's boosted I can see how much I've gained. Here we are at Advanced Engine Dynamics. I'm not expecting it to make a whole lot more power. I just kind of want to see if there are any changes from the last dyno. Um, and I like to get the car on a dyno every six or eight months anyways. It's kind of like going to the doctor for a checkup. You can kind of see if things are changing that you wouldn't really feel during normal driving. Just got off the dyno with a bone stock broken boosted, which you guys will see in another video. So we've reached the uh, stressful part of the day and that is sitting here on the dyno. Got my mega squirt open, we're gonna make some adjustments. And it, it is freaking so hot right now. We're just gonna see what it can do. Probably try to add a little boost to it, see if the spool up is any different and just gotta do the best I can and try to tell a difference. This is a back-to-back -back graph of my best dyno run from last time. 
versus this is just after a few runs this time. I haven't really touched much. You can see right in here we got a little bit of horsepower and torque up top, which I was hoping for. Almost 262 wheel horsepower, almost 239 wheel torque. My blood pressure right now is also 261 over 238, so I don't know how much more power I want to try to get out of this thing. Well guys, I just broke the stock engine record on Toby's dyno. Um, I'm almost finished with the tune and I'm going to let it cool off a little bit and see if it picks up a couple horsepower from cooling off and then I'll show you the final numbers. Stock Miata motor record on this dyno, 276 wheel horsepower, 241 pound feet of torque and uh, I'm, I've had enough stress for today so I'm getting ready to go get something to eat and go road test this thing. So when you bring your Miata here, you see this sticker, come at me bro, try to beat it. So what the heck is all this testing for and was I actually able to come up with any hard evidence that this upgraded billet compressor wheel from JDS Performance Turbo is actually makes any sort of difference? Well, we're here in the garage and I got my laptop and I'm going to show you exactly what I found. So the first thing I want to show you guys is a data log of the boost threshold test. Now this is an overlay of the new wheel and the old wheel. I went out and did a whole bunch of pulls and compared all of them and threw them in an Excel spreadsheet and I got just two average pulls and I put them on top of each other. The more faded line is the billet compressor wheel. So green is RPM, the X axis is time, and red is boost. Now you can see down low here the billet compressor wheel was able to produce just a little bit more boost sooner. And as the RPM climbed, pretty much evened out. And at the very top, and it's probably pretty hard to see, at the very top, it was able to gain boost just a little bit faster. Now this is a dyno comparison of my car a few months ago with the OEM Garrett wheel versus the dyno from a couple days ago with the billet wheel. Right here, just like in the data log showing more boost on the dyno, the car actually makes more power um, down below, you know, 2,000 to 25, 2,600. It's actually making a tiny bit of extra power, and that's that extra maybe one PSI of boost that you're seeing. In the middle, it evens out, just like on the street in the data log. And then as the boost gets closer to its peak, you can see the billet wheel is showing just a little bit more power right there. That's about 3,400 RPM. Both days were 90 degrees and both days were 20 to 22% humidity. So I could not have done a more fair test with these. I really did the best I could. Now these data logs are from the spool up test. And you can see coming from the same RPM down here, the faded line clearly is spooling faster. Now, is it actually a noticeable difference? Is it actually measurable? Well, on the graph it is. Let me hop over to my Excel. Now I did a crazy amount of polls and just got so much data for this because I really wanted it to be fair and I'm glad I took statistics because it helps with stuff like this. Now what I found was from 3000 RPM the billet wheel spooled up about 7% faster and about 40 RPM sooner. Now I know that's not a huge difference but you have to remember that there are zero drawbacks to installing this wheel unlike changing the whole geometry of the turbocharger to over here from 4,000 RPM, same thing, roughly 7% and 50 RPM sooner over the average of all these poles. Let's talk about the final numbers here. I'm not saying you're going to slap this compressor wheel on your car and instantly gain 22 wheel horsepower because there was some extra tuning involved. But what I did notice up top, I was able to get the wheel to easily produce a little bit more boost, about 2 PSI more boost and it really ramped up the top end torque, which is what gave me that power. So yes, I did increase the boost, but that wheel made it easier to do that because I tried to do it last time and the stock wheel just didn't want to flow enough. So pretty much what you're gonna gain is cooler sound, a little extra response, about 7% faster spool up, depending on your setup, and a little extra horsepower that you can tune for. I'd say for the price they sell the wheels for, it's a pretty good deal. So I'm going to include a link in the description and I hope you guys check them out. It's a sick product. And don't forget to subscribe for more Miata Turbo Madness.